I'm in Chicago's bungalow belt. Now, these homes were built efficiently, which made them cost effective. Now a homeowner could invest in skilled labor or quality materials, like the brickwork or a clay tile roof. This 1929 bungalow still has its original clay tile roof, 3,000 square feet of a green French style tile that's not too common. They've held up pretty well, but a lack of maintenance has led to a leak at the front of the home. Renaissance Roofing of Rockford, Illinois has been contracted to do the repairs. They're clay tile specialists. Jason Zipsy is a manager of field operations. Jason, a tile roof job uh, looks like a big job. What do you have to do here? Well, this is a leak repair, so we're basically going to restore this section of the roof, and then the rest of the roof we're only going to maintain. We're just going to repack the hips with mortar to keep the birds out, keep the wind-driven rain out, okay. that sort of deal. Now, what do we have to do? Pull all this off? Yeah, we're going to pull this off, clean the roof up, change out the broken tiles, put in new mortar, call it good. Clay tiles can fail over time, but it takes a long time. A well-made roof should last the better part of a century. Builders chose clay tile for this durability and strength, but with that comes a lot of weight. A thousand pounds, you know, per hundred square feet, and so it, it weighs a ton. So for every 10 by 10 square foot patch of roof, it's a thousand pounds. Just for Just the for tile. tile. Asphalt shingle is uh, 240 pounds per hundred square feet. So they, they, for the tile roofs, did they have to do anything more substantial? Yeah, the, they did everything from the foundation to the walls to the structure of the roof to be able to support this weight. The leak in this roof has compromised the roof structure. Water has rotted some of the original wooden decking underneath. The old material is being replaced with new three-quarter inch white pine. An important thing to remember with a roofing job, your roofing material, in this case clay tile, holds back about 95% of the moisture that's hitting the roof. Here, two layers of 30 pound roofing felt will be laid under the tile. The valleys are being relined with copper flashing, like they were originally. It's more expensive than 10, but because it won't rust, it'll last as long as the tile. Everything is held down with copper nails. How come you're using copper nails? The reason why you're using copper is electrolysis. You, you want to keep all metal similar. So you don't want to put galvanize against copper because the copper will eat it up. It's a matter of one metal being acidic and the other one not. And so that's right. Copper has been used on roofs for generations. Copper nailed down hundreds of years ago is still doing the job. Now, because copper contracts and expands very highly, especially when you're outside in the elements, yeah. this seam, we're not going to solder. You just don't need to because it, right. it has a natural slope anyway. Yeah, and it's going to flow good. So, you know, we're going to overlap it to three inches. And if we pop rivet and flux and solder this seam, more than likely by next year, that seam is going to break from the contraction and the expansion. Yeah. Right. So the nailing purposes of it it, it'll still contract and expand a little bit, but with the nails, it's gonna hold it down pretty tight. Laying clay tile is pretty much like laying any other roof. Take your measurements, do your math. We're gonna run them at uh, 13 and a quarters. And put down some straight lines to work with. After the Great Chicago Fire, builders were encouraged to use fire-resistant materials. Clay tile came to America from Europe where it had helped cut down on fire damage for centuries. The tile we're using on this job is almost identical to the existing tile. It's salvaged from an old building and was even made by the same company. Ludowisi has been making tiles for over 400 years, starting in Italy and now in Ohio. The process hasn't changed much. Basically, clay is shaped and then baked in very hot ovens. The difference between a good and great tile is the amount of moisture it has before it's baked. The less water in the clay, the more durable the tile. Raw clay is dried for more than six months, down to 6% moisture content. The dry tiles are then baked at over 2,000 degrees for 21 hours. From the ovens, the tiles are tested and then ready for the roof. Strong, durable, and naturally fireproof. Now look at how these uh, overlap. They don't overlap by much, not like uh, uh, you know an asphalt shingle does. But uh, is that is that basically what you can expect from any tile? It's just you know that one half inch 
overlap from piece to piece? It depends on the style of tile. There's lots of different styles. They all interlock in different ways. Your flat tiles, they, uh, they overlap each other with what we call headlap. A good contractor, he'll nail off the first course and maybe he'll put a nail through every four or five tiles, but it's really the weight that holds them down. Now these are, uh, these are almost identical. Where did you come up with a perfect match? This is a salvage tile. We brought it in from a roof on a building that was tore down, bought the salvage rights, went in, ripped the roof off, took it back to my shop, and then uh, when we get jobs like this repair work, we bring in the, the perfect match. It says five, seven, two, eight. Right, which is the fifth month on, or the fifth day on the seventh month in the 28th year. So these tiles were actually made in 1928. And it's still just as solid as it was in 1928, I'm sure. Once the main tile courses are laid, you finish up by capping the hip lines, where each course meets. The cap tiles are nailed to one by twos that are nailed to the decking. And these are basically just uh, clay tiles as well. So we just set it on here and try and make it match the other side. That's right. And generally, what, this, what the bump of the tile is, is that's your locking point. So you're slide it down into place. And once it hits that, it ah. locks it right into place. Cool. And that's, uh, that's your exposure right there. That's it. Yep. <laughs> this is just part of the two-step process. This is the first step here. It's basically getting it down to the roof deck. The shape of the cap tiles leaves openings and voids underneath, places where birds and rain can find their way in. Careful mortaring fills in those holes. And once you clean it up, you're all done. Oh, look at that hmm. one time. That's a good looking job, man. Thank you. Good day's work. What do we have to do in terms of maintenance? Just change out the broken tiles. You'd be lucky to get any. Clean the gutters. Maintain the mortar every 50 years. Done deal. Well, you said that this was uh, original going back to, what, 1923 or so? 29. The guys that originally knew how to do the roofs died off, and so there's only a few of us that really know how. So if you do it right, it's going to last a good long time. That's right. Excellent job. Thanks, Thanks a lot. for the day. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. When the Chicago bungalows were first built, they were definitely bang for the buck. Solid construction, fine craftsmanship, and top shelf materials. You could say they were a slice of the good life, and they still are today. I'm Marty Dunham. I'll see you next time I'm back to the blueprint.